Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Greetings to you all in the sweet and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is coming very, very soon. I want to thank God for this beautiful day that the Lord has gifted into each and everyone's life and I pray that all shall be well with you. Amen. We have just almost crossed a, a couple of months of this COVID-19 or this coronavirus but I want to thank God. God is being faithful. How many of you believe that? Amen. God is being faithful. He has kept us safe and sound, uh, you know, uh, in, in His arms. And, uh, and we always declare, as a family, as a church, we declare victory in the name of Jesus and victory in the blood of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> you know, this COVID-19 has brought in a lot of problems. A lot of issues within the family, a lot of problems in countries and the nations. Many people have tried to cross over it and many people, this COVID-19 has reaped a lot of souls. Many people have died and the world uh, still is in crisis. During this crisis, what should be our attitude and how do we approach a lot of sermons during these times are based on the crisis that the world is going through. And I was asking and praying the Lord what should be the message that I should share this morning. This is what the Lord has put into my heart. Uh, and this is, what the, uh, this is what the words that the Lord has given. Can you turn, turn your Bibles with me to uh, the book of Acts chapter 4. The book of Acts chapter 4 verses 6 through 12. The book of Acts chapter 4 verses 6 through 12. I will just read it to you. And Annas the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. I'm just reading from verses 6 onwards, but this will be the key verse that, will be, that we will be concentrating on. But follow with me from verses 6 onwards. This high priest, the great powerful people, gathered together at Jerusalem. Oh, that means there is a big problem. You know, and the word, seven verse, seven verse says, And when they sat them in the midst, they asked, By what power and by what name have you done this? Have you done this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit and said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what mean is he made whole? Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand before you healed. And this is the... And this is the stone which was set to not at your builders, which has become the headstone of the corner. Neither is there salvation, verses 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. The one word that I want to concentrate this morning will be no other, no other, amen. Crisis can hit anyone, anytime. Last week, last week, suddenly one of my friends, he called me and said, pray, pastor, pray. What was it? Crisis in the family. His wife was uh, taken to the hospital and uh, she, was, she had a ca cancer in the throat. Immediate crisis in the family. During this crisis, what would be the way? How would be the way? What would be the, the, the way that we approach? What would be the answer? You know, this is what we're going to concentrate this morning. The world is going through a lot of crisis. Many, many people die. Even many people think this is not going to be over within a couple of months. It might take certain years. But in the midst of crisis, what would be our words? How would we approach it? Peter and John, the two anointed disciples, they were, you know, going through a crisis in the situation. Everything started in chapter 3. 
What happened was the ministry of the apostles created chaos and confusion within the Judaistic religious community. They were very powerful servants of God. Their ministry created problems within the Jewish community. Everything started, I said, said in the healing of a man. It was an important man who sat in that beautiful gate before, between, before the temple which was in Jerusalem. And he was there for the past 40 years because his age is mentioned over there. He was around 40 years old. And from the very birth, he was crippled. And he was a lame man. And he was brought every day morning before the temple. And he sat near the gate called Beautiful. And it was one day when Peter and John went to the church, the temple. And this man asked for an arm. And Peter looked at him and said, we don't have silver, we don't have gold, but we have one thing. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That was the incident that brought Peter and John into a great crisis. That led them into a great crisis. And not only that, you know, we read in the Bible. Listening, see, uh, seeing this miracle, 5,000 people were converted. And they joined into this Christian faith. 5,000 people in that same instant. And not only that, we find in chapter 2 of Acts, when Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, he stood up and preached when he was filled, when the 120 people were filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter stood up and preached. 3,000 people were added to the church. They were born and baptized in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And they were added to the church. Now, within a couple of weeks, you know, when you calculate, more than 8,000 people were transformed from the Judaistic religion and custom. They joined to the church or they joined to the body of Christ. Confusion. Crisis. There was a big problem in Jerusalem. You know what happened? A couple of people wanted to stop this. They didn't want this to continue. Because Judaism was a very old religion, thousands of years. But how can this happen? And therefore we find from verses 6 onwards, the high priest Annas and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and many other of the kindred of the high priest gathered together in Jerusalem. Oh, oh there is a big problem. There is a big problem. You know why? Because these people were not ordinary people. Now who is Caiaphas? Who is John and Alexander? Go home and when you are hearing me at home, just go through. Not now after this. Who is this Annas the high priest? They were very powerful people. They were the instrument in crucifying Christ. They made Christ to come under judgment. They brought Christ to be crucified. Such powerful people. You know what's happening now? These powerful people gathered in Jerusalem now. There is a committee meeting going on. For what? Against these people called Peter and John. Why? Thousands of people are being converted to another religion or to another way of life. Christianity. People are joining into Christ. And they're saying no to the old tradition. You know what these people did? They called Peter and John, put them in the prison. We find, we read it in verses 3, they were put in the prison. They also were under lockdown. We are also under lockdown now. You know, many, many days now we are under lockdown. And there were a lot of uh, lifestyle and culture that we all adopted during this, life, uh, during this lockdown. These disciples are really under lockdown now. Now in the midst of their crisis, what was and how did they approach this crisis? You know, whenever there is a crisis, whenever there is a war, there is always a code which people come up with. For example, this pandemic has a code name called COVID-19. Yes or no? Yeah. 
this is understood as though it is known as corona uh, all those things but it, it has a code which has been understood as COVID-19 for example the Gulf War which was fought they had a code name. What is the code name for some of the Gulf Wars? If you can, you know, know if you know this, just talk to me. One of the code war is Desert Storm. How many of you heard about it? Yeah. The code name, Desert Storm. And there was another code name for Desert Shield. You know, many of the crises, many of the wars, they, in order to explain the entire thing, they come under a code name. And there was another code name called Alpha. What was this code name during the World War II? They, they brought this, they, they just wanted to approach or defeat a certain army. And they went in the code name of Alpha. But today, this is what I want to emphasize. During crisis, as a child of God, what is our code name? What is our code name? If you ask Peter and John and great men of God, they would say their code name is no other. No other is a code name to tackle crisis. You might be thinking, what am I trying to say? But in this passage, we're going to understand Peter and John, they did not come under ordinary people's rule. They come under great men of power. They came and they came under Caiaphas. They came under John, Alexander, and many other people who were the policemen of the Jerusalem temple or the guards of Jerusalem temple. They were under a big crisis. In the midst of the crisis, they were asked by this great man, by what authority are you doing this? But what name are you doing this? But for them, you know, it is so interesting when you read the scripture, the, the priest and the high priest... They knew them in two ways. They knew them as ignorant people. And in verses 13 we read like this. They understood John and Peter as people of ignorance and unlearned. They were people who were ignorant. And they were not powerful, these apostles. They were unlearned. But how come? These many people convert themselves and join with Christ. What is that power? The priest understood. We brought Christ under judgment. Who are these guys? Nothing. We can just crush them like this. Crush them. What can they do? But they didn't understand. They brought Christ, but Christ resurrected and gave victory. Hallelujah. But who are these people? Ordinary, ignorant people. They thought we can crush them, put them in the prison. They will give up. They will give up. In their crisis, they came up strong. Amen. Sometimes this is what I believe. During our crisis, we come strong. Amen. There are few things self to and we become stronger. And to the question that the people ask, the priest has, under whose name do you do this? Because of the incident that happened in chapter 3. This lame man for 40 years and he was healed. 5,000 people were added. Under whose name are you doing this? This is when Peter said, I want to tell you men of Israel. I want to tell you great leaders. The code word for this crisis will be no other. No other church. I want to tell you this morning. You might, go, you might be going through different kind of crisis and difficult situations in life. But today, I want to tell you, let's join together and say, there is no other. That will be the code language, a code name for this crisis. Amen. Hallelujah. Though Peter said, we do this in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They were not satisfied. They were not satisfied. Come on. You do this in the name of Jesus. We brought Jesus under, I mean, under, under judgment and we crucified him. We have the power to bring your master into crucifixion. And who are you? No, we do this in the name of Jesus. They didn't leave it there. They searched these people. And this is, this is what I really liked. And this is what the disciples, no, the high priest came to know. They came to know that verses 14 they came to know that they had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, church, this morning, 
What is the power of a person I mean, who will be with Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Being with Jesus, these high priests, they want to know what is the power and the boldness and their firm faith. They didn't have a, uh, you know, wavering faith during crisis. They were bold enough. They knew Caiaphas, oh my God, he's a great powerful man, religiously and politically number one there. And uh, Ananas, wow, he's another power. He's a high priest. If he says a word, that's it. In the midst of their question, they were bold enough. They stood up and said, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. You know, they had a strong faith. They have the boldness. And the people came to know the source of their confidence. And the source of their faith. And the source of their mission is because they were with Jesus. Amen. I want to tell you church this morning. If we are with Jesus, we can overcome this crisis. Hallelujah. No matter what the people say, no matter what the doctors say, no matter what the, you know, great thinkers say, I want to tell you, anyone who spends his time with Jesus will overcome, overcome this crisis. Amen. And the cord will be no other. No other. Let anything approach us. But we will boldly stand up and say, no other, no other. Hallelujah. Many people have escaped this COVID and uh, heard about, you know, some of the interesting news around. The other day, I heard about a very interesting news. Uh, a lady who just, uh, asked, uh, who just was uh, uh, healed because uh, from this COVID, her name is Maria Brenas. I don't know how many of you heard about it. This lady was born uh, in uh, 1907. She's, uh, uh, you know, she's around, uh, 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 how many years old now? 100 plus years old. And it was said in the TV, uh, it was said in the, in the radio the other day. She survived the Spanish flu. She survived both the world wars. And somebody asked him, did you see Hitler? She said, yes, I've seen him. She was born in 1907. And she said, I've seen Hitler. I've seen the World War I. I've seen the World War II. And she survived. She was a victim of the Spanish flu. Go home and read what is the power, what was the power of Spanish flu. Thousands of people died. And, she's, and today, she also survived COVID-19. She came out of the hospital day before yesterday and people interviewed. How do you feel? She said, I'm worried about my son who is 80 plus. <laughs> the world will say people are about 80 plus will die because of this COVID. But I want to tell you as the worship leader said, God is in control over your life. Amen. God is in control over your life. There are many people who have survived these things. You know, nothing is impossible with our God. This is what Peter and John, great men of God says, Caiaphas, you may be greater, but I want to tell you, they must have said, we want to tell you something. Though we, you put us under crisis, we will stand up. We have a mission. We have a stern foundation. We have a stern, we have a stern faith in us. Sometimes our faith waver when we are going through crisis. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, church, if we are not spending time with Jesus Christ as the apostles did, this crisis might touch you. This crisis might shake your faith. Many people have understood their sands going down, going away from under their feet. Many people have, have understood that, you know, they have been shaken because of what's going to happen tomorrow. Many people have lost their jobs. The crisis is enough to destroy families. This crisis is enough to destroy our passion for Christ. This is enough. But the one thing that, that will help us to overcome this, be in the feet of Jesus as the disciples sings, as the disciples wear, come to Jesus again. Amen. In the midst of the crisis, what did exactly the disciples mean? No other. Peter was the first man, the first word that we read today. The first man who said, there is no other name 
than the name of Jesus Christ. The first code during your personal vision and ministry will be code named there is no other name. Amen. Hallelujah. Our code during crisis is no other. But the first code completely would be no other name. Amen. Hallelujah. Throughout the Bible, the Bible has explained beautifully. There is no other. There is no other. There is no other. Today, we will go very quickly into three very important no others in the Bible. Peter, Apostle Peter, when the priest and high priest questioned them, he boldly said, there is no other name than the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. They were caught up and put in the prison because of their ministry. People listening to me, are you doing your ministries? People listening to me, pastors, you must be doing your ministry when the crisis hit your ministry. This is the code language we need to say. There is no other name which is given under heaven on this earth. Than the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. Hallelujah. What is the theology? What is the power that is in the name of Jesus? When Peter said, there is no other name. Oh, high priest, you can put us, you can beat us, you can put us in the prison again. But they boldly said, no one can stop the fire burning within us. I want to tell you during this crisis, don't let the fire, you know, quench away. Don't let the fire burn in you. How is it possible by this code name, no other name than the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. What is the power which is in the name of Jesus? We understand through the scriptures that this is the power, this is the name that can save souls from hell, amen. How many of you believe it? Hallelujah. This is the only name that can save every believing soul. How do I say that? And the day of Pentecost, Peter preached, 3,000 people were added. People believed and were baptized and they gave their life to Jesus Christ. The single healing brought in 5,000 people. How? Not because of the miracle, because of the name that the miracle had been done. The name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In your ministry, you might be doing, you know, personal ministry or, you know, I mean, uh, counseling or, uh, uh, you know, I mean, children ministry. Or uh, you might be a pastor, teacher, evangelist, whatever ministry you do. Don't give up. Don't give up. Let the fire burn. Amen. Let no crisis, you know, make you to give up in your ministry. During your ministry, just say this. The name of Jesus, no other than the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. What is the power which is in the name of Jesus? The second thing I want to say is from Philippians chapter 2 verses 10. We find like this. That at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow. Amen. It's not might bow. The word says very clearly that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Every knee should bow. My son was asking me yesterday. Daddy, then what about the powers? Uh, what is the power under the earth? And what is the power, you know, in the celestial powers? I said, my son, take this and read it. Every power, no matter under the earth and above the earth. The Bible says, in the name of Jesus, they should bow. Amen. Hallelujah. And it says... Of the things in the heavens and things in the earth and things under the earth. Every power. If you think there is some other power which you cannot control and if you are scared about the power. This morning I want to tell you stand boldly and say no other name than the name of Jesus. What is that hurting you? What is it that troubling you? What is that spirit that really troubles you? Stand against and say to that power in the name of Jesus. There is no other name than the name of Jesus. You spirit bow down in the name of Jesus. This is what Apostle Paul boldly said. You know why? He was filled with the Holy Spirit. And the second thing is they were with Jesus. Unless until we come at the feet of Jesus, we don't get the boldness. Unless until we are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, we won't get the boldness my dear people of God. During this crisis, come back to Christ. When we come back to Christ, this is the code that Jesus will give. This is the word. The words will, will be given by God himself. 
And they said, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. No other name than the name of Jesus Christ. And what is the third healing or third power in the name of Jesus? We find the first thing is this name has the power. This name is the only name that has the power to save every believing soul. The second thing is this is the only name which is above every name. And the third thing is this is the only name which has the power to heal. Amen. Peter was a witness. 5,000 people witnessed it. Who could heal this man? He was there for the past of couple of years asking for alms. Peter said, I don't have gold or silver, but I have one thing. I have one thing. What is that, Peter? The name of Jesus. And in that very name, this man was healed. Amen. Hallelujah. So therefore, when you are going through the crisis code, when, when you're going through crisis this will be your crisis code. Number one, in your personal ministry, if you are hit by any crisis, this is the crisis code of your personal ministry. No other name. Hallelujah. No other name. If your church is going through a crisis as a whole, the entire church, people leaving, you know, problems inside, there is a crisis code name for the church issues. What Paul, in his epistle, has mentioned Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. If you ask Paul, what do you mean by no other? What do you mean by no other? And Paul would probably say that no other gospel. No other gospel. Hallelujah. When Peter could say no other name, Paul says no other gospel. Hallelujah. This is the second code. What, what Peter, what Paul has to say here. Amen. The second thing is no other gospel. Amen. I marvel verses 6 to 8. Verses 6 to 8. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel. Paul says like this, Galatian church, what happened to you? Now he is not addressing an individual. He is addressing the entire church. When you are going through crisis church, what is your crisis code? He says, the crisis code will be no other gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. As a church, we stand for one gospel. How many of you believe it? Amen. We stand for the gospel which is according to the word of God. Paul says, Galatian church, what happened to you? How quickly did you give off, give away your faith? And you took into and you believed in another gospel? Paul says, yes, there is something called another gospel. But when the church as a whole is going through crisis, the elders and the pastors and the believers should stand firm and say, there is no other gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. What should we say? There is no other gospel. When you're going through personal ministry, say this code, there is no other name. When the church as a whole is going through crisis. I've seen, I've heard, you know, there are a lot of uh, problems within the doctrines. New doctrines coming up. Even Paul said, uh, in the last days, I call it as comfortable doctrines. Comfortable gospel. If you, if you cannot overcome or if you are addicted to something. And you have, a doc, you have a gospel saying that, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. No problem, no problem. It's okay. And that, you know, it will be attracted to us. And we slowly move into that gospel. And this is what Paul says. Be aware of it. Comfortable gospels will knock the church. Comfortable dormant gospels. You know, somebody said like this. The good thing about a suitcase is the handle. <laughs> no matter how strong the suitcase is. If it doesn't have a handle, I tell you, you'll be fed up with it. <laughs> we all know how we all people who will travel from place to place. No matter how bad the suitcase is, if it has a good handle, praise God, you can carry it. I want to tell you, in these last days, 
there will be attractive handles which will be fixed to the gospels. But as a church, if you're going through a crisis, tell this code, no other gospel. No other gospel. We are satisfied with one handle that is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we will be obedient to that gospel. This is what Paul said. Paul, I mean, I mean Galatian church. Why did you move away? Who shook you? What is that gospel which came in? Let me the, read, read that verse to you. It says like this. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace. Into the grace. Of Christ unto another gospel. Which is not another. But there be some that trouble you. And would pervert the gospel of Christ. And he gives a warning. Though we or another angel from heaven. Preach another gospel unto you. That than that which has been preached unto you. Let him be cursed. Let him be cursed. This is, what peop- this is what Paul said, Apostle Paul said. You know why? He was with Christ. He was with Christ. Apostle Peter, as a, a high priest said, these guys, these people were with Christ. And that's why they have a strong foundation. And Apostle Paul, a man who was against the Christians, now when he came to know Christ, he got a crisis code. And that code is no other gospel. No matter what happens, Paul says, I will stand. It'd be hard, but I will stand. It'd be tough, I'll stand. It might say, this is not good, this is not good. You better come and leave. I will stand for the gospel. I want to tell you, church, let nothing remove you from your calling. During these last days, Let no other gospel remove you from your calling. Your calling is so important and powerful. Let nothing remove you from your calling. Let nothing remove you from your faith in Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Let nothing remove you from your eternal hope. Amen. Hallelujah. And Paul says, if you listen to another gospel, let him be cursed. If an angel from heaven comes and tells you, This is another gospel, not this one. Let him be cursed. Paul confirms by saying, the word of God which is in your hand, in my hand, and the gospel which you read in that is the final gospel. And as a church, if you're going through storms in life, some believers who came new, when they come across many kinds of gospel, they will be shattered. Which one should I believe? Which one should I believe? At that moment, people who are strong in Christ say this crisis code into their faith and say no other gospel than the gospel which is there in the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just moving so quickly. The third code that we understand, which is under this code called no other, is read, it can be be read in the gospel of John chapter 14, verses 6. Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No other may, no other way, no other truth. And no other life. Amen. If you are going through a crisis called, what will be my future? See, I left my tradition. I was into a traditional faith for all these years. I left it for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I left my lifestyle. I had a lifestyle, good life, a satisfying lifestyle. I had everything in life. I left everything for Jesus Christ. Now I'm going through a crisis. Did I make a mistake in life? Did I make a mistake? 
do I have to turn back and say goodbye or I'm really, you know, I, I'm really betwixt. I'm, I'm really standing in uh, somewhere, nowhere. I'm standing in nowhere. Come on, somebody help me. This is what exactly happened to the disciples. This third code, no other, was said not by the apostles or the disciples. It was said by Jesus himself. Jesus says, when you are stuck in between this faith issues and f- about your future, what will be my, the life of my family? Come on, I'm, I believe in Christ. What will be the life of my uh, future of my children? What will be the future of my life? When you are stuck in that crisis, Jesus used this code, no other way, no other life. No other truth. Amen. Hallelujah. You know exactly what happens. Chapter 4 of Gospel of John is a beautiful chapter. It says like this. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. What happened here was. When they came to know. That Jesus Christ. Is had to have to go away from this world. In in chapter 14. Jesus was talking about his death and departure. Immediately the disciples' hearts were really troubled. These were some of the thoughts I think that might have gone into their mind. They thought Jesus would leave them forever. Leave them forever. The second thought is that they would have no more masters. Or there is no master Jesus is leaving. And the third thing is. Will they be accepted back into the community? When Jesus is not there, will they be accepted back into the community? Will they go, can they go back to the synagogue and have fellowship? All this thought might have come into their hearts. Understanding these trouble situations, Jesus tells to them this beautiful cold. Disciples, let not your hearts be troubled. Let not your hearts be troubled. Anyone who is listening to me. Are you going under this crisis? This great trouble? Did I take a correct decision in life? Have I taken the right decision? Right choice to follow Jesus Christ? Or is it like this? Do I have to suffer throughout my life? Is there a hope for me? What is my future? What is, you know, my job? I lost my job, but still I'm praying. I don't know what to do. I don't have a life. Come on, somebody help me. I want to tell you, Jesus tells to me. Jesus tells to you and me this morning. Don't worry, my child. Let not your hearts be troubled. The code word, the crisis code for this situation will be no other way than Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Jesus himself says, my child. Let not your hearts be troubled. There is no other truth. There is no other life. Jesus himself is the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no other. Actually, the word no other was brought in by Jesus himself. This beautiful crisis code that I want, that I'm talking to you about this morning is no other. This is actually brought in by Jesus. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other. I am the resurrection and the life. There is no other. I am the good shepherd. There is no other. I am the life and the resurrection. There is no other. I am the bread. I am the truth. There is no other. This morning, church, this no other code was transformed from from Jesus Christ into the life of the disciples. This morning, I want to I want to invite to the word of God. I want to invite each and every one of you to to I mean to the word of Christ. We need to come back to the presence of God. The moment we come back to the presence of God, God will help us to speak what we need to speak during this crisis. God will help us to know how we need to act during this crisis. Let us boldly declare together this morning this beautiful crisis code which is no other name hallelujah there is no other name there is no other gospel there is no other way there is no other foundation 
There is no other hope. There is no other power. There is no other cornerstone. Only the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. This morning, church, shall we just close our eyes? Amen. Hallelujah. Just close our eyes. You're with me. Let us close our eyes together. We're going to declare in the name of Jesus. Father, during this crisis of God, I'm coming back to Christ. I'm coming back to your throne of God. I'm coming back to your feet, oh Father Lord. We want to say boldly together, there is no other name than the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is no other gospel than the gospel which we have in the word of God. There is no other way, the truth and the life, only Jesus. There is no other foundation. There is no other hope. There is no other power, only Jesus Christ of Nazareth. One thing I want to assure you.